Hey guys, and welcome to number 19 in the first steps and preparation series. Um, today we're going to take a look at the remaining input nodes. But first of all, let's just set up a new file that would be easier to work with during the next few tutorials on all the nodes. So I'm actually going to load in that same file that we've always used up to now, which is this one. But I'm going to restructure it a little bit, okay? So we're going to leave that as this. And then I'm just going to set up something over here. And that is following the following. Uh, let's just delete all the nodes for now. We can re-add them afterwards. And now let's just input under layout one of those frames. And uh, yeah, they're basically, they're in the end of the list, but we'll just talk about them in the beginning because we can use them right away. As I said before, frames are just ways to organize your scene. And let's just organize it so that we have an input and an output, okay? Shift D, and let's put it over here. Now let's open up the properties panel, and let's just label this one input notes, and this one, uh, this one over there, output notes. Okay, and now we just need to re-add the things we just deleted. And that would be, as an input, we can use anything. Um, let's just re-add the render layers. And as an output, let's add a viewer and decomposite. Okay. And like this. Cool. And now in, in between here, the magic is happening. But for now, we won't do anything in here. Or maybe we will just to to make a point or something, but not, we won't talk about those nodes for now. We'll focus on input nodes and in the next tutorial on output nodes. And as you can see now, everything on those input, uh, on, on this frame and on this frame is actually being transferred. And you can see if, it, if they're on the verge, just on, yeah, just on the line there, they won't be taken. You have to be below it. You have to move it onto the frame and then you can move them along with um, the frame. Um, okay, so let's just connect that to the viewer with Control shift left click and let's also put that into the composite like this and now if we have 12 It calculates um, your render and you can see that's what you get the same scene as always actually. Let's just delete that other Render layer here. We don't need it for now Like this and also let's just move everything back to frame one like this okay here we go and now as you can see the render layers as we talked about in the last tutorial are our first way to input data into our compositor now this way it's just then the 3d data with all the materials data and so on that is inputted over here and then now you could took that take that apart as i showed you with all the passes you could take that apart um yeah put it into several separate bits and then recombine it or whatever you want to do with it um, but as I said, we will talk more about those passes when covering the uh, color nodes, like the mix node and stuff. And for now, we'll focus on the other input nodes. Okay, so let's just delete the render layers. And you can see now we have nothing in our scene. And um, now we are going to add in a different input node. And in this case, or actually, you know what, let's just leave the render layers over here so we can see all the different kinds of input nodes we have. And now let's add in image, okay? And image is as such quite self-explanatory. You have basically, you can basically input images um, from anywhere you want, either from Blender itself or from um, a, a different folder on your hard drive, okay? Now, I didn't provide any images for you guys, so you just choose your own because we won't really do anything with it. We're just going to look at how it works. And... Um, I'm not going to open an image and I'm going to open the one over here, okay? And this is an animation I rendered a few months or even years ago. And what it does, it kind of is a, it is an image sequence, okay? Uh, because you should always, I think I mentioned that before, you should always render into an image sequence and not into a movie file, okay? Because let's say you have a big animation that takes like, I don't know, a week to render, okay? And then you have thousands of images. Um, Always, yeah, like like in a uh, stop motion movie, like always, every image is one move ahead of the the last one. 
And if you render that into an image sequence, then if Blender crashes, you just have, can you can just pick up your project or your rendering um, from where it crashed, okay? And you don't lose anything except for the time that it wasn't rendering because it yeah because it crashed. But if you render into a movie file and if it um, if Blender crashes or if you you have a power outage or whatever and during rendering, then everything you've rendered so far is basically lost because it is very very hard to retrieve information from a corrupt uh, movie file. And therefore, that's not the way to go. Okay, and this, then I rendered into this image sequence here. And um, now we're just going to open <coughs> this first image. And now over here, you can see single image. Okay, so now we just loaded in one image. This image is called insign 0000.png. And now if we connect that with Control Shift left click to our viewer node. We can now, uh, let's just make the backdrop smaller with a V on, your key on our keyboard. You can see the image. And you could also connect that to the composite. Then you could also see it down here under render result. Um, anyway, this is basically it already for the single image. But there are other options, okay? So we could also, for example, use image sequence. And there it's a bit more complex. Now we can actually lo load in several images. And according to where we are on the timeline, um, since we don't need the 3D view for now, let's just say change that to the timeline. And now, depending on where we are in the timeline, it'll change the image. Okay, so right now we are we are on frame zero, and then we can go to frame 60, and so and you can see it always stays the same image, and that's because we only loaded in one frame. So the first thing to do is to change this number of frames, okay? So if you have an animation, like in my case, that has 551 images, then if you want to load in the whole, the whole animation, you have to put in 551. And now you can see, if I'm on frame 56, it will load in frame 56. 125, 125. And this way you can actually use that to combine it with your current project or whatever. But chances are you don't want that. There, you can always manipulate it so that it actually fits with your current animation. So let's say you you want this to start at frame 100, okay? Or actually, no. Let's just first manipulate the other thing. Let's say you want this animation. Um, well, it's kind of hard to explain because it's a similar thing. But let's say you want your current project to run for like say 100 frames, and only then this animation sets in. So let's put in 100 over here, and you can see. Nothing happens, still frame 0, 0, 0, until you are here, and then after 100, it starts to do the same thing as before, until we are at 651, where it is finished, okay? So it will just offset the whole, anim uh, it, yeah, offset the whole animation by 100 frames, basically. But it's a bit um, confusing because this is actually called offset. And with this, you're just offsetting the other thing, and that is where the animation starts. Um, but not on the timeline, but um, f from the uh, images that you've loaded in. So if you set that back to zero, then it once again starts at zero. And then if you set that to 100, then you can see the first frame, uh, the first image that is loaded is 101. And then it just, you can just browse through them like this until 551, until 651 which is a problem because we don't have anything after 551. So you can see the problem there. Okay, but let's say you don't want to load in all this image, all those images. Let's say you just want to load in 50 of them. So just put in 50. Let's set the offset to zero for now. And then you can see it just displays the first 50 and then it stops, okay? And that's maybe what you want, but it could also be that you want it to be cyclic. If you check cyclic, then it will just loop through those images again and again, okay? So you can just Go to 50, then it goes to 1, 50, 1, 50, 1, 50, and so on. And now there's one strange thing, and that is if you change the offset, okay? Let's put the offset to 20. Now, if we don't have cycle checked, then it now starts at frame 20 and goes to frame 70, okay? And that's quite as expected. But if we check cyclic, we have a problem, because now it also starts at frame 20, but it only goes to frame 50, and then it goes back to 1, 50, 1, 50, 1, 50, and so on. Okay, so that's one thing to note. And finally, that's a bit weird, there's this auto refresh button. And it basically says that whenever you change a frame down here, it automatically refreshes the image. 
but right now it is not checked and it does that anyway. Okay, I can go here and it automatically refreshes it without us having to do anything. Um, yeah, now if we check auto refresh, the same thing happens. Now what might be, let me just try something here. Let's just go to 3D view over there and now, okay, now it doesn't refresh anymore. And now if we go to node editor and if we, oh, but we have auto refresh checked. Okay, so as you can see, it doesn't really do much at all. I'm not really sure why. I'm probably doing something wrong. I don't know. If you have any further information on this subject, um, please post it in the comments. But yeah, it really isn't that important. Now, um, the same thing goes with movie file. You can see it's the exact same layout, exact same par parameters. And now if you um, just load in a, um, let's say, this movie over here. You can see it's the exact same thing. You can just go to zero over there. I'm not quite sure how many frames this one has. I guess about 1,000 and something, but it doesn't really matter. And then it also goes from 0 to 50. And if you go to 1,050, maybe, you can see it plays the animation as before with the image sequence. Exact same thing, except that we are now using a movie file instead of an image sequence. And then there's, there's this last little bit confusing um, type. Okay, it's called generated. And now if we select the movie, nothing happens because we're not the source is not the movie, but the generated image. Or we could also go to this other image. And then you can see it automatically changes to movie file, but if you go to generate it and then try to select it, it doesn't work. And one thing I have to notice, the reason why it automatically changed, let's delete that. The reason why it automatically changed to um, a different file is a uh, source is because if I have generated over here, no, uh, single, single image on this, on this one, let's say that single image on this other image, you can see it loaded in as a single image. Now, if I go back to in this file, it'll automatically, it should automatically select the file or the source we had previously selected, okay? So per file, there's only one source. You cannot load in the same image from Blender with two different source types. So now if I go back to this one, it automatically changes to single image, okay? And yeah, now about to generate it. Let's just change the timeline now to UV image editor, okay? And we, need, we did not yet talk a lot about the UV image editor, but we just needed to make a point. I just needed to make a point here because if you go to generate it, you can basically um, draw things over here in the UV image editor and it'll automatically update it in your compositor. Okay, so let's just create a new image. Let's make it completely white. Okay, it's called untitled. And now on, over here, let's choose untitled like this. And now you can um, check that brush over here. And now you can draw things on here. It doesn't really do much though. Let me just change the color to red. Now you can draw things on here. Uh, by the way, we'll talk more about how you can use this stuff over here when covering the UV image editor. So don't worry about it just now, but just so you can see what it does. And now it updates it right away over here. Okay. And now there's one important thing. Um, as I said, you can only have one um, image within Blender. And basically those are all the images that you have within Blender, loaded into Blender as well as over here. You can only assign them in your compositor to one source. Okay. So if I duplicate that now, or actually let's do something else first. I'll do that in a second. And now you can basically imagine that this image is saved into this node. Okay. Now, if you delete this node, then it'll probably disappear. I'm not even sure. Let's just try this. Let's just delete it. You can see it's still here. We can have to render this back to entitled. It's still here. Okay. And now if we re-add that image node, if we go to untitled, you can see it automatically selects generated again and we have our image back in. Control shift left click to connect it to the viewer output. Okay, so that works just fine. But now be careful. If you change that generated to single image, then you will actually change the, the source type of this image in the compositor. And then it will, be, it will be lost because this can only work with a generated image. So if you go to single image now, you can see it's gone. And now if you once again think, check that, uh, select it, you can see it's no longer here. Uh, for, for some reason, the image stays because it kind of doesn't get another image from this current thing. But anyway, now if we go back to generate it, 
you won't be able to get it anymore. It's just gone, okay? It's just gone. So make sure you don't accidentally change that. But now we could just um, draw something onto it again. Now we have to create a new image. Yeah, you can see this is a bit bothersome sometimes. And as I said, I don't really use that usually. Um, oh, this I could create a new over here. Yeah, here we go. Now you can see this is a bit bothersome and not something I usually use, especially also because Blender isn't very fast in tracing your path. At least that's what it looks to me. So if I draw something very fast, you can see this is no longer really a round um, um, line, but it's very jacked. And now I'm actually drawing onto it with my Wacom tablet, which is supposed to be very smooth, but you can see if you're too fast and it's just jacked. And in other software, like for example GIMP and stuff, this doesn't happen. So yeah, usually I don't work with this at all, but it's nice to know it's here. You could also use it to put uh, a few notes onto your renders and stuff. Um, yeah, so that is our first input node. Now let's just cut that. Let's move it over there. And let's actually make that a bit bigger. And then let's look at the next one, which is texture. And um, we didn't really talk about textures too much as well. But over here you can see this a texture icon. And here you can actually add textures, okay? And right now we're adding world textures. Um, it doesn't really matter where you add them, you can always call them over here. But I prefer to assign them to certain objects, okay? So in your 3D view, we can actually choose an object. Then you have materials, and to each material you can assign a texture. Um, and yeah, as I said, it doesn't really matter. I prefer to add them to your um, materials or to a certain material so you can always know where they are. You can also go to world. You can just add a new texture and um, just make sure that under influence you uncheck blend because otherwise it will actually influence your um, sky settings and stuff. Or you could also add the brush text. It doesn't really matter as I said. And now we have this cloud texture. Now over here we can call that one. It is called texture, so we call texture. And now you can connect that to your viewer output and you can see we have that texture loaded in. And you can also um, over here go to another da different data type, like for example, image or movie. And then you can actually load in an image as well. Let's just do that real quick. Let's load in this image. That was not an image, I'm sorry. Um, let's load in a different image then. Let's load in that one. That was one of my path pathetic tries to um, draw something in GIMP with my tablet. Um, anyway, and now you can also choose that texture, okay? And that re didn't really work out too well. Oh, yeah. You need to make sure that you're connected to color, not to value, okay? And then we have our image loaded in. Um, and now I just deleted it. Okay, Blender just crashed. Okay, I'm back. I hope this is more or less where we left off. Um, anyway, now you can actually also load in images this way. And um, yeah, now you have two parameters that are two sockets here where you can change something. We can change the offset. As you can see, it just um, um, yeah, offsets them on the x-axis or on the y-axis or on the z-axis, which doesn't really do anything over here because it's only in a two-dimensional space right now. And then you can also scale it in the x, in y, or in c, okay? Now, as you can see, in c, nothing happens again because the c-axis is the one pointing at you from your monitor. And um, you can also use um, different vectors to input data automatically. However, I do not know what that would be. Maybe I will stumble across it during covering all the nodes, but for now you can just change them manually. And this way you're going to choose adjust your, your texture. Um, so yeah, that's the texture node. We haven't made that bigger before, exactly. Okay, now let's input next one, is value. And this is quite simple. Here you just have just a value, just, just a number, okay? So let's say we need to load in a different image over here. Um, let me just see. This one doesn't really matter. Now we have two images, one from the texture node and one from the image node, and here we have this value. 
Now, if we have some other nodes in here, let's for example say, let's add in a mix node. More on that in another tutorial, but just for now, just for fun. And now with this mix node, you can, you can combine certain images. So let's just add in the, the color of the texture up here and the one of the image down here, okay? And now let's connect that to our viewer node. And right now we have mix of factor one, which means it mixes that and takes 100% of this lower image onto the other one, which means we no longer see the upper one. But if you go to 0.5, for example, you can see it now mixes them together. Maybe a bit more towards to the right, like this. You can see what happens. Depending on this factor value, they are mixed together. And now you can see you can also input a certain value in here. Now you could, for example, input this, put that to 0.1 and input that. And you can see it's the exact same thing as if you'd put in 0.1 in here, okay? Now, um, as you might um, think, this doesn't make a lot of sense because you could as well just manipulate the factor value. That is true, but it's more about showing you guys what this value does. It's just, it's just a value. Um, you can animate it with insert keyframe um, and so on. That's just available in, in your um, compositor. Now, uh, I, I didn't. I never really used that before as well because you can always just change the value, values in here. You can animate them as well, but yeah, just just so you know what it does. Now the next thing we have here is um, RGB, and that is once again rather self-explanatory. You just have a value, and if you click on that color. Um, preview down here you can actually choose it according to RGB, H HSV or hexagonal code and uh, yeah usually you're working with RGB or at least I am but actually if you want to copy copy colors okay the hex code is pretty great you can just select it Control C Control V at the next node and you have the exact same color um, anyway now let's just set up a color over here something doesn't really matter um, like this and okay, let's make it a little bit greener. And now we can use that color. But don't forget one thing. This color does not have any kind of format, okay? So right now we could just remove that and put that into there. And then our image would be mixed with green, as you can see over here. Um, but once again, it doesn't make a lot of sense because we have a color wheel right there, okay? We can also just adjust it over here to get the same result. But it's just, 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 this is just to show you what you can do with RGB. Now, let's go back there. Now, one th important thing to note is that this RGB, as I mentioned before, doesn't have any resolution or so. So if you input that over there, and if you duplicate that, and make that one red, and you input that over there, you can see you, you just get a default um, format here. And that is important to note. So if you want to... Uh, mix it with an image, then it automatically takes the format of the image and yeah, you always need something like that, otherwise it's just just color with no uh, format at all. Let's just delete that and let's move it over here. Okay, and then the next thing we have is time. And uh, this is a bit tricky, um, but pretty cool as well. So let's just once again plug that in over there and plug that one in over here. Oh, and by the way, as soon as you plug an image into a socket where you've selected the color, um, the color will just be ignored and only the image counts. That is important as well. And now you can see factor. So this kind of gives you a value that can then be used to manipulate something. If you put that in there, you can see, and let's change to timeline again, like this. Now you can see this is called time. And that's what it does. It changes its value according to time. Now, right now we're on frame zero, which means up here we are over here. And here you can see the value is, by the way, this value down here is zero and up here it's one. You can see the value is zero, okay? And therefore it gives a zero. So it mixes this image with this image while considering this second image um, with zero. Just don't, don't doesn't consider it at all. Therefore you only get the original image, the white black one. Now, if we move forward in time, let's say to frame, and by the way, you can see um, from here to here, it's same as frame one to 250. If you go to frame 125, you can see it is now 50-50. 50% this image, 50% the other one. And now if we go to the end, 
you can see it's only it's now 100% the second image. And now you can also tweak this curve. Okay, you can say I wanted something like that. Then it will start out with a zero. Then it go to 50%, it'll go back a little bit, and then it'll go up to 100% in the end. Or you can also make it so that you have a completely different curve like this. Then, for example, it will start at zero, it will go to 50% or a bit above, and then it will go back to zero again. And that's, this is your time input. And then, last and final thing is movie clip. Now, you might ask yourself, why do I have a separate node to insert movie clips if I have it already over here in the images? I can also sell movie file. Um, over here, you've got a few extra options. Uh, basically, you have... Let's just load in a file here. Now you can see it loaded in. Let's just make that a bit smaller, like this. Okay. You can see it also loaded in the animation, but you do not really have a lot of control at all. Um, you can't change the start frame or the end frame or whatever. But what you can do, you can see this offset x, offset y, scale and angle function, okay? And this is something I've never worked with before, but what it does is, if you have, um, if you make an image, uh, a movie with a camera in real, in real life, and then um, you, you always shake a little bit, okay? So you don't have a very smooth um, movie file afterwards. And now by offsetting every, every single image, every single frame on that movie, by a certain amount, you can correct that, okay? And um, yeah, you can, uh, you can also scale it with, with some software and change the angle, how it is rotated. And all that data can, is kind of being considered with this node. Okay, so as I said, I didn't really work too much with that. But if you know what it is, then maybe you can use this node. Um, so yeah, and by the way, you can also use image sequences or movie files and then put them into the mix node. And now you can see it all gets a green touch and it still changes the image accordingly. And uh, yeah, this way you can also do some post-production. For example, you can add in a color balance node like this. And now you can change how your movie looks. And now you can see it looks quite differently than before probably. And I kind of even like this look, it's a bit too dark. And, but yeah, you can do lots of cool things over here and change the overall look of your scene quite drastically. Okay, with a lot of different methods. And yeah, it's, once you get into the compositor, it's pretty cool to work with it. And yeah, don't worry about those color balance things. We'll talk more about them in a different tutorial because it takes quite a lot of time to explain those things as well. And yeah, for now, just know that those are your input nodes, input types. Oops, like this. And yeah, once again, to summarize, render layers for 3D input from your 3D viewport that you've rendered. RGB is just a, um, a red, green, blue value, just a color. Time is just so you can man manipulate things according to time. However, if you use the insert keyframe method on a certain value, then with the IPO curves editor, more on that later, you can do similar things. Image input, simple image, single image, image sequence, movie, gener movie file are generated. And then we have the texture, uh, where you use textures from within Blender that you've set up previously. Then you have a value, whenever you need a value. And then you have movie clip, which is the one you use if you have additional data from your movie file, like offset X and Y, scale and angle. So yeah, um, let's just delete that. That's pretty much it for the input notes. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something. Um, if you have any questions or whatever, as always, post it in the comments, please. Thank you for watching and see you next time.